On paper, the Raptors bring the Oklahoma City Thunder to double overtime, and yes, that looks good. But when you consider the Raptors had a 23-point lead in this game, maybe it looks less good. But there's still some positives to take away. Let's break it all down in tonight's post-game show. Reminder, everybody, we do content like this for every Raptors game, pretty much. So smash the like button if you enjoy this one and subscribe to keep up to date with all the great content coming at you. And you can join the Amateur Hour Army today. All right. Well, long game here. Gets to double overtime. The Raptors lose eventually 135 to 127. And I always say, I always lead off these ones saying, it's not necessarily about the win-losses for the Raptors. It's about play, how they play. It's about development. Are there things we can take away from this one? And the good thing we can take away from this one. And certainly... For this game, there was a lot the Raps can take away positively. The way they flowed on offense, specifically for the first two and a half quarters, was 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 great, good to great. Uh, their defense was outstanding, uh, especially in the first half. Defense was outstanding. Took away everything the Oklahoma City Thunder wanted to do. Got out to a big lead at the half. Got out to an even bigger lead to start the third quarter. And then as... The opposition adjusts. We've seen many times this season, not to the degree of a 23-point blown lead, but as the opposition starts to make those adjustments, like when Darko gets the game plan right, my goodness, he got it right today. Great job on the coaching staff game plan-wise. But when he gets the game plan right, as the other coach starts to adjust, how does Darko counter? Does he counter? Does he counter quick enough? And sometimes it does, isn't really the case. Sometimes it's also you're playing the better team and they wake up. Sometimes it's a combination of both. And perhaps we have a culmination of a lot of factors here that contribute to this loss. So, you know, I, when the Raptors were up big, I was like, I mean, they could lose from here and I'd still be happy. All this good performances, all this good stuff came out of the game. Now that we're here and they did lose, leaving a, leaving a sour taste in my mouth. They led by 23 points. You got to find a way to get over the line in those circumstances. The Raptors had an electric first half of points, 24 third quarter points, 23 fourth quarter points. They just didn't have the stuff on offense in, in the second half. The defense slipped away. I wouldn't say it necessarily slipped away as much as the Thunder just started to hit their threes. The Raptors had a clear game plan. The Thunder have a lot of guys who don't space the floor well. They forced the Thunder to take 63 three-pointers tonight compared to our 35. And perhaps just the volume of threes in this one and shooting it good enough at 36.5 in the end was enough for the Thunder to get over the line and win this game. Shots started to fall more in the second half. The guys who you were leaving open who weren't hitting early, like Dort, like, uh, like um, Wiggins, they started to fall. Uh, even Giddy ended up in the second half. After going 0 of 2 in the first half, Giddy goes 2 of 6 and 3 in the game. So even he goes 2 of 4 in the second half. He starts knocked down. Shea starts to hit some. Dort went 5 of 12 from 3. Like, you're just not going to get that on a game-to-game -game basis. And that's ultimately where the Raptors kind of got killed in the end. But the offense dried up. But even still, they, put the, they, they, they started the game so well. They put themselves in such a great position to win this game that it, you just kind of felt like they got to get over the line. And even still, they had their chances to do so. They had the last shot in the fourth quarter when it was tied. I don't know what happened, but they had five seconds, and it turned into a R.J. Barrett three-pointer over Chet. Uh, whatever the play was, if that was a play, obviously not a good play. If it wasn't the play... Whatever it was didn't work, and it wasn't very well drawn up. Uh, whatever. Not good. Chance of redemption. Last shot, last session at the end of the first overtime. I don't know. I don't even know. what They had 12 seconds. I don't even know what they wanted to do, and it just turned into a Gary Trent ISO. Gary Trent, notable bad isolation player, against Shea, notable good defender. Didn't work out. Shea blocked it, and <laughs> here we had double over overtime, where once again, the talent really just took over for the OKC Thunder. There were a lot of good individual performances for the Raptors, uh, solid individual performances at least, but you know, a combination of, you know, I don't know, fatigue in overtime. Barnes plays 48 minutes, but hey, 
Shea played 40 as well. The Thunder had four guys in the 40 minutes. So did the Raptors, but both teams are tired. Combination of fatigue, dropping performance, Thunder, our better team, coaching adjustments, a whole bunch of combinations here go into the loss. But like I said, out the gates, the Raptors, like what was so good with the first half and what the positives we can take away from it. Because there are going to be some positives here. Defensively, zone defense was absolutely cooking. The Thunder floor spacing isn't great. Not a ton of floor spaces here. So the Raptors picked on that. They took away Shea's drives. They took away drives in general. There's only two free throws in the entire first half for the Thunder. Uh, only eight in the game. They take away the, the shots the rim. Excellent defending. They double Shea heavily, which worked. They closed out extremely well on open shooters, and most of the time they weren't great shooters, and we didn't have to worry too much about closing out. Took away the Thunder's offense. Uh, on, our, uh, on our offense, the ball is moving really well, snapping around, open looks for three, open looks the rim, quickly was diming today, didn't have a very efficient game, improved as it went on, but had 11 assists here, really good point guard game from quick, which I want to see, he's looking better with a proper pick and roll partner in Jakob Pertl, Jakob Pertl had a great game as a result, playmaking everything on offense looked good, but as the game got constricted, their defense stepped up. We deviated a lot away from the stuff that was working here. Did not get Scotty Barnes involved enough late in the game, which was a bit puzzling, whether that's play calling, whether that's Scotty being passive. He had a good game, but passive late for whatever reason. Barrett had 19 first half points in the second half, plus the overtime combined. He only had four points. So they really took away what was working for the Raptors in the first half and ultimately reverse that 23-point deficit, and again, ultimately win this basketball game. But some positives on the box score status. Scotty Barnes, despite you know maybe being passive late, 8 of 15, 19 points, 9 assists, 7 rebounds, and a block. That's nothing to sneeze at. Pearl goes 8 of 9, 19 points, 12 rebounds. His defense was very nice to have back here. Gary Trent, uh, relatively inefficient from the field. Four of eight from three, 16 points. I mean, Gary's just got to stick to the catch and shoot threes. That's where he's at his best. RJ Barrett, nine of 16. His defense was a bit of a problem. Uh, you know, we even gave him some of the easier matchups, and he still couldn't hang a lot of the time. Bit concerning. Minus 13 plus minus in the game. Unfortunate. Um, we know it's a, we know the defense needs to get better. It does, but there's positive takeaway from RJ on offense. He's scoring. He's scoring for this team. Uh, quickly, like I said, great point guard game. Struggled efficiency-wise, 7 of 20 from the field, 2 of 9 from 3. I wouldn't say it a bad game. I, I'd still say he impacted the game positively. Thad with another great showing here, just, just consistent all over the board. A really bad Bruce Brown game, to be honest. Didn't get much second half minutes. Uh, Dennis Schroeder got a lot of minutes, especially down the stretch here. Not his finest, 5 of 16. 3 of 6 from 3, 19 points, but Schroeder goes minus 23 on the plus minus in this game. It just felt like felt like we were going back to the old habits of a little bit too much Schroeder. Like, good in spurts, but a little too much for him today. Uh, some fans noted in chat that Noir didn't play today. That's a problem. Well, here's the thing. Thad is playing well. He's going to come off the bench. Bruce Brown is coming off the bench because he should be good. He played like ass, but he's good. Schroeder is your backup point guard. Schroeder is absolutely coming off the bench and playing. There's three guys. Your nine-man rotation. Noir is probably better than Grady Dick, but Grady Dick is super young. We want to give him minutes. We want to develop him. Give him minutes. So he's up in the pecking order for that reason. Though I, I believe he, I don't believe he even played second half. If he did, he got like one minute. Uh, just not a lot of faith there. Um, a lot of stuff that worked in the first half just deviated away from it in the second half, unfortunately. Uh, Shea in the end, I mean, look, we got double overtime. It's not super strange to see high-scoring stats, but, I mean, five guys with 20-plus points is a certainly strange stat to see. That being said, the Raptors had six guys with 16 or more, and they had four guys with 19 or more. So high-scoring game because it is overtime, and you're playing your, your main guys heavier minutes. The door five of 12 from three, man. Can't believe that. Overall, I mean, the Raptors, they lost possession battle. Offensive rebounding seemed to, to really go against us in the later stages of the game. 
efficiency wise, it was it was fine from the Raptors. I mean, you played a better team and you you played a pretty damn good game. It was just you you got sloppy late. They dug in. They won the game they probably weren't supposed to win in the end because of the deficit early. And that's what good teams do. They punish. And the Raptors don't have that that cutting edge to their game, that killer instinct to their game. So you're going to have games like this. The Raptors, for the first time in 168 games where they lead by 20, end up losing. Um a uh, pretty historic streak, but the Raptors won 168 consecutive games with a 20 plus point lead without losing it. And uh, they, they, they blew this one today. A lot of positives, but it is tough to swallow in the end where it did unfold. So upcoming schedule for the Raptors, the uh, road trip continues here. Two more games in the road trip out of six. Uh, they played four out of six. They have the Pelicans on the second night of back to back tomorrow. That's tough after a bunch of your key guys just played 40 minutes. Then you have the Hornets on Wednesday. We know what happened last time we went to the Hornets. For back at home for games against the Rockets, the Cavs, the Spurs, the Pacers, and the Nets. So, uh, tough week. It'll be a tough week. There's five games this week, plus the trade deadline. So, you have a game tomorrow, game Wednesday, and a bunch of the guys on this team may not be here for that Friday game against the Rockets. So, it's going to be a tough week. Would have been nice to get that bit of a morale boost after the win today, but, you know, it is what it is. Raptors played well, mostly. Helped with the tank a little bit. Uh, final point here. Scotty, I know you might be seeing some of the chat here. and watching back later. Scotty Barnes is 22. He had a good game. Scotty Barnes will be just fine, guys. Don't you worry. All right. If you enjoyed, smash the like button. If you did enjoy, sorry. Uh, subscribe if you want to see more content like this. We do what we do contests for pretty much every Raptors game. So get subscribed to the Amateur Army today, and I will see you again next time.